Welcome to Transformation with Tara Sutphin. Tara Sutphin is the author of Blame It on Your Past Lives and Soul Agreements, three audio CD series, metaphysical meditations, sourcing series, and sleep programming. Tara has also collaborated with Emmy Award winning Shane Stanley and Marla Maples on numerous DVDs. Tara Sutphin is a master in the psychic sciences. If you'd like to find out more about Tara's work, upcoming seminars, and meditations to help you fulfill your dreams, visit her website at tarasutphin.com. Welcome to Transformations with Tara. This is Tara Sutphin. And my guest today is Andrew Brewer. He is a very world-renowned psychic. He is the rock and roll psychic. He's a clairvoyant, an astrologer. He has been listed in over two two dozen publications as one of the top 100 psychics in the world. Yeah, and so we have... A lot of amazing reincarnation cases with anomalous dates and creator of three tarot and divination decks. Andrew has a new set of four interlinked past life regression MP3s. And welcome, Andrew Brewer. Good morning, Tara. How are you? Oh, good. Good. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. I'm in Phoenix. So I'm on vacation, so that's fun. Wow, well, I'm sunny, awesome. not like Ohio. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So, um, how? Yeah, you you liking? Uh, yeah, because I was just back east, you know, so uh, the Midwest there. So I know exactly what the weather is, and um, so so you're enjoying all the wonderful Phoenix weather. I mean, has it been rainy? It's probably been rainy as well. Well, I mean, there were a couple of days, so like Noah's Ark weather, but, you know, for the most part, it's really been beautiful. I like Phoenix a lot. It's really kind of an amazing place. I got to stay in this incredible, beautiful place up in Camelback Mountain for almost a week. That was incredible. Wow. Oh, wow. That, was that so is I've had amazing. A really, so I've had a really good trip. I'm doing a bunch of stuff this weekend. I'm going to Nashville next week. Then I go back to Ohio in about two weeks. So, mm. so well, it's good. I'm sorry. It's good I'm missing good. you. I seem to be, we seem to always pass, and it's like, what a shame. I know, because I was planning to come to L.A. this week, this past week, and then one of my best friends is in London, and another one of my friends went to North Carolina to do a movie this week, so um, that happened. Anyway, it's always good to be in your show. I've done this for years. I love doing this with you. I love you, so it's all happy. Thank you. Yeah, I love you too. Hey, you know, um, so Andrew is the one who talked me into being on the radio. I mean, a- eons ago. He would begged me and begged me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> In the late 80s, I think. In ni- 90s, late 90s, or mid 90s, to get on the radio and have a show with him. And I just was too shy for it. You know, so, well, so you know, it, we can overcome it. Perception. To say, you know, you take someone that's that's very perceptive, that's very creative, that's super photogenic, that knows a lot. Yeah, to me, this is what you should do. Yeah. So I think it all works out. Thank um, you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you're always great on the radio. Now, now, uh, as far as uh, what are you doing as far as like some of your psychic work? Are you taking clients right now? So oh, those yeah, in Phoenix. Clients. Well, I'm yeah. doing I'm doing an event on Monday here mm-hmm. in Phoenix, and um, I've been really busy the last few weeks. I mean, you know, for me, it kind of comes and goes, ebbs and floods. But it's been super busy. Excuse me, the last uh, couple of weeks. You know, I won this contest. You know, they have these you know contests. He's the best psychic thing. So I got voted a man of the year and light worker of the year and all this stuff. So so suddenly now I'm like uh, popular. So that's good. And. Um, you're always popular. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I'm more popular now, so that's good. So, yeah, so I'm doing a thing here on Monday, 
and uh, I'm going to Chinese New Year's tomorrow, or I'm going to the psychic fair just to hang out on Sunday, and, um, you know, then I'll go back next week. Awesome. And I've been doing a bunch of stuff with past lives, kind of what you and I spend a lot of time with. I mean, that really has been, I think the biggest focus of my career has been trying to understand, document in whatever ways that I can, how past lives operate. I just did a radio show a couple of days ago talking about past lives a lot. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to integrate my version, just as, as you do too, of, right. of what really it is that reincarnates. How does that operate in terms of of development for an individual in this life? You know, what are the patterns? And so that's that's how I spend my free time. Yeah. Yes, yes, and you know, um, yeah, <laughs> me too. I don't watch much TV. I'm usually have my nose in a book researching because I'm just always so excited about what I do. I'm so you know looking up history to see where that correlated with somebody saying something or what I'm finding in somebody's astrology chart to, you know, a regression. I mean, I'm just excited for them. Like, let's look it up right away. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It is. It's yeah, fun. Yeah. It's, 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 it's kind of like a you and a haystack kind of game. And so, so for me, now that there is Google and Wikipedia and things, it's much uh, easier to do search strings when you have storylines to try to find people that might might fit that. You know, in the past, it was almost impossible, you know, 30 years ago, uh, to do the genealogy of what a past life might be. But now it's a little, more, it's a little easier. And so, so you look at the patterns, right? So I do the same thing as you. I spend a lot of my time looking at family patterns, looking at... Um, you know, common themes, and then trying to find the facial characteristics, because I think there is a uh, a facial recognition kind of energy that comes with it, too. You tend to see people not only have similar personalities, but they have similar, similar physical characteristics. And, of course, you can do the synastry of the astrology. The astrology is always pretty kicking, because the astrological markers are almost always really tight in some way. You know, like a soulmate kind of relationship, as you, as mm-hmm. you would think. Yeah. Right, right. There will be aspects, especially when I do the Eastern astrology, you know, because that's more of a formalistic type of uh, numerology uh, type based uh, uh, part of things. You know, I do a lot of mathematical geometry. And um, the, the it's just incredible what matches up. And so, you know, people don't know their birth time. And it's like, well, you know, if you have enough uh other people's birth times that I can find yours. You know, because there there's it's it's funny about birth times. You know, a lot of people don't have the birth time on their chart, uh, on their uh, birth certificate, but uh they'll have it in a picture. They'll have it in the uh hospital record uh that their mother kept. Um or you ask your your family. Uh but uh you know the aspects uh, are, are incredible when you start mixing it with somebody else's. Now, uh, you know, it's all like a little formula. And, and, uh, what I found, you know, like even my dad, my dad's was, you know, my mom was born in a tent in Alaska. And whereas my, my dad, he, he was, uh, born in a hospital in Santa Cruz and they, they had his birth certificate, uh, at the time. And he's born in 1926. You know, he's not no longer on the planet, but yeah, he he was born in 1926, and they were doing birth certificates. So they do do the birth certificates a lot. Hmm. And I love to look it up, but you yeah, can because, find it if you have to. If you have to, if you just don't know the time, then we doubt yeah, it. Yeah, even if you just have the date, if you know someone's born in 1830, you know you can look on an ephemeris and see the date, and even though you may not have the ascendant and may not know exactly on the moon. You can get kind of a rough idea in terms of the of the of the location because of the especially western, was, yeah, western absolutely. can really get in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with Vedic, you would have to have the you know you'd have to you'd have to have the time, but in western, mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. you can kind of eyeball it and see because what's what's really going on here are the mathematical harmonics. I don't mean to get so you know convoluted here. I'll just say this real quick. But what you're looking at are the degree measures. And you're looking at the intensity of those aspects. It's like the more they line up to be exact, it's like the light comes on. 
And so when you see specific kinds of patterns, conjunctions or the quincunx, which is 150 degrees, when you see those two a lot in almost exact aspects, that's usually a karmic kind of signature. So you can, you can see that with people. Like if you are thinking about dating someone, even when I was in high school, back in the 70s, I would try to be really slick and go, oh, hi, when's your birthday? You know, I mean, and I would start looking it up even when I was a teenager. Because you can see the aspects and harmonics and it gives you kind of a flavor of what's going to come down. And, and you, the same kind of thing works with the past lives. And you see them in patterns and you see them in groups. I know so many actresses who are psychics and all reincarnated actresses. It's interesting. I mean, it's like a group, and they kind of come in their own little cluster. So trying to figure out the past life thing, it, it, it's like it's, it's an obsession, kind of. I've been doing it so long, I'm just dying to figure it out. I never will, but, I mean, I'm still, still yeah. working on it. Usually what I feel when I'm doing working up astrology charts is, that there are clues of what life, past life you're working on. It's not necessarily yes. the one you lived uh, previously. It's one that you need to work on or to, you know, you're coming in to meet the same people or similar people and and you're working on the same things. So I, I agree you know, with that. And I think they yeah. kind of come in clusters too. Yeah. So another aspect to, to past lives and uh, theoretical, and I think, I think it probably works this way. Is you can look at groups of past lives as a totality. And so you might have had a certain kind of experience and reacted in a certain kind of way in 1910, right? So now you're in a similar situation, you're making different choices. So, so what happened in 1910 actually serves as a catalyst, as a, as a learning experience for you in 2017. What you're doing in 2017 also changes the way in which changes the meaning and the signature of 1910. So, so all these things have an interlinking. And so you look at the emotional evolution. If you think about past lives as really an, a style, an emotional style, a tendency to process things in a particular way. So karma, theoretically then, would be, you know, you're given a situation your personality style, your emotional uh, mode of dealing with things is what triggers that karma, per se, because how you react sets things in motion. And if you change the way you respond, kind of take the high road, then that mitigates what, what comes next. So it's fascinating to see the cause and effect of it. But, yeah, it's, it, that's my day. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, right. It, well, the astrology, I feel, you know, it's the strengths and weaknesses in a person and, and definitely the, some of the events that happen. If you do have the correct birth time, there's a lot that you see and, and a lot of those re connections with people. I mean, you know, you just either can't get away or you can't stick. There's, you know, and, you know, sometimes it's a very, blessed thing when when things don't go your way or that that things don't stick you have to trust that because the karma there might not be good and you're trying to you're you're really trying to wrestle it and the bottom line is you know you got to trust your life i mean when you ask for the best life when you ask for great things to happen in your life like i mine uh, you know, me and my best friend, Marla, we always say that we walk a beautiful life because every step we believe that we walk a beautiful life. I mean, you know, she may not be, you know, she may be having a hard time now, but she's a beautiful person and a beautiful heart. And, you know, we walk a beautiful, amazing life. So the thing is, is that, you know, it's to keep going forward, even when you think that that bad things are happening, because no, you have great karma. You know, I feel that, uh, you know, that's, that's the, the key of your, your destiny or your, your fate. No, yeah. I, I not agree to, with that. Don't knock it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a soulmate is really, <clears throat> excuse me, a soulmate is someone that changes your emotional foundation and as a result changes the course of your life. So you meet someone, you have this reaction to them, you get excited to go do something. And as a result of that, it 
subtly or very dramatically shifts the chart of where you're headed. And that gives you a chance to experience different things and refine yourself and kind of, I don't want to say perfect yourself, but get your act together in a different kind of way, you know? So I don't look at negative events so much as negative because lots of times later on you find that they were a catalyst for something really positive. So Correct. your mm-hmm. your understanding of history, of your own history, changes. And as a result of that, those events change. And just like yeah. I was talking about the example of 1910, you know, as you – if you think of astrology, it's like an evolutionary uh, roadmap. So there's a bag of potentials that are spelled out in your natal chart. So you have this potential to evolve in a certain way. <laughs> Excuse me. And you have certain restrictions kind of built in, too. And you can look at the timing mechanisms built into astrology, especially through progressions, as when those things bloom. So if we have, a, we have let's say, 40 degrees between your moon and Mars, we're going to build a case that when you're 40, you're going to have some kind of external event that clarifies that moon-Mars energy. At the same time, it's, a, it's kind of a roadmap for when that particular flower is going to shine, you know, when it's going to bloom. And so you can build this this um, this model for how to maximize the evolution. And astrology right. is a really good tool for that. I think. Yeah, I think so too. I you know I've done so much research. I mean, you know, everybody knows that I wrote the book Soul Agreements, and you know, all of that work is my work. And um, yeah, of all that chart work and stuff, and trying to see exactly what is destiny and why. You know, where, where is this destiny? <laughs> and, um, uh, what, you know, um, tapping into it as far as, you know, we have activation points within our whole chart, but if you don't take the activation when it is there and say yes to your life, then those activation, pa- to, you know, points pass. So you have a lot of yes points within your chart. You know, people that you meet and that are great love and, you know, you waffle because you don't want to be tied down. And, you know, there's all sorts of different things that, you know, people will make a decision against. And um, then they look back and say, oh, gosh, I wish I would have made a great choice there. But, you know, I mean, sometimes those pass and you have to live with the consequences of life. So, yeah. Yeah, I got into a conversation. I went to a party here in Phoenix um, last Saturday. And, uh, you know, when they found out, you know, what I did, you know, started talking to me. And then we're talking about free will. And I said, well, I don't completely buy into 100% free will because I've made so many predictions. And I know you have, too, and a lot of other people as well. Yeah. I made so many predictions of things that I was told was impossible. This is impossible. never happened. I'll never do that. That'll never happen. It happened exactly the way I said it. Now, this didn't, I don't do it all the time, but I've done it so many times that you have to go, hmm, lucky guess twice, a thousand times, and that's something going on. So I think that there is a mechanism. Like, you know, the way I always explain it, okay, yeah, you can kind of meander, but some way or another, your bus is going through Kansas. It's just the way it is. You know, there's going to be, you think you're going to Georgia, but the river, you know, overflows and you got to go to Kansas and you meet this person in Kansas. I just feel like there are certain kinds of things that are preloaded. Now, how you respond to it, well, that's part of your evolution. That's right. It's the reaction. Your, yeah, it's absolutely. Reaction. Oh, my God. The so reaction sets things in play. And so I can react to this in a negative way. You know, that really annoyed me. I'm unhappy. Or, you know, you know stuff happens. Let's, let's roll with it. Each of those reactions creates a lot of other reactions. Right? So, but the situation, I think, is, is sort of there. You're going to have this situation. You're, you're going you're gonna to come into this. So when you look at the, uh, the harmonics, how soulmates get together. It's fascinating, right? You know, so you gotta you kinda pick pick certain kinds of styles of engagement through the astrology and through the geography and I mean it's a complicated thing. Whoever's doing this, 
they got they got it going on. I mean, they they really are doing something incredible beyond my powers to figure out. But ultimately, I believe that the ways in which we help people, because you think about it, you and I are, are helpers, we're problem solvers. I mean, that's really our, our job, mm-hmm. is to try to help people understand their history in a way that maximizes it so that they can take the good from it, so they can be prepared to take uh, positive choices in the future, and also to kind of get oriented to get on the path that goes towards opportunities for more positive choices. It's a simplistic way to say it, but I think that that's really the truth of what we do. And uh, the way I do it is based on emotions. I tend to read emotions. And so if you understand emotions, emotion setting um, set things into a course of action. And so you sort of follow that course of action. That's the way I make economic predictions. It's based on collective emotion. Everybody's sad about their housing. I mean, everybody's sad about their house. It must be a housing crisis. I mean, it's that kind of logic, right? So, um, but, but, the, but, the, but the bus stop in Kansas, I think it's pre, preloaded. That's my opinion. Everybody's got an opinion, but that's mine. Right. And another thing, too, that I like to point out to people is that you, you're not born on accident in this time of history. Yeah. It's, yeah. You, I mean, how you, uh, if you feel that you want to change things, you actually have to, it's not about complaining. It's about actually moving your body to, you know, go go and uh, start some kind of work group. But it's not about just complaints. So it's interesting. It is an interesting. Um, yeah, and that's I don't even know if marches are considered just complaints. You know, I mean, it's not a work group at that point. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, change happens because people are called to actually change things and it becomes their destiny and their job. I mean, you know, I don't think you and you, Andrew, or me <laughs> thought that we would be doing this in our life as far as, you know, the counseling part of every day to way clear for people. Yeah, I mean, I, we I were young. More of a psych, right. I mean, when I was young, I had a totally different conception of what that would be. You know, I mean, from a past life standpoint, if you shake my karmic tree, you're going to find a lot of army officers. And so as a child, that's really the way I perceived myself. When I was an actor, I mean, that's the way people saw me. I mean, that's kind of the vibe that I give off. But, but at the same time, there is an instinctive way of relating to process, or instinct, an instinctive way of relating to people. So an army officer and a psychic, as crazy as it sounds, have certain kind of characteristics in common. So, um, so no, when I started, I never believed that this is what I would be. But at the same time, I was really fascinated by it as a child. I like to read Hans Holzer books when I was you know, nine, and, and, and I was always super fascinated by it. And, um, and I was also one of those children that when they're two and three years old, they remember past lives. Of course, this was in the 1950s, uh, you know, so there was no frame of reference for that. But I definitely had that. I found pictures where I drew things as a little kid. I found them, you know, just recently when I was at my mom's. And um, so that, that thing was there. And then for me, it was when I started doing past life regressions, I was kind of like a psyche prodigy when I was in my early 20s. It was just, I was telekinetic for a while. That was weird. But, I mean, it went through a lot of different things. But once the kind of psyche thing was out of the bag, and I was 24 years old, really, then my life was never the same. And um, there, was no, there was no going back to the jock, you know, whatever. That, that boy was still there, but not in the same way. So. Right, right. For me, too, when I was about 21, you know, and maybe before that, because I had the near-death experiences, but really tapping into who I was, so probably early 20s, I became a whole... It, it, I could never go back. It was a never going back sort of thing. Yeah. And my that, life has always been for a purpose. People. Yeah. 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 I had to, I had to surrender to it instead of fight it. Cause I fought it for a while. I still maybe fight yeah. it sometimes, but in reality, well, I, mean, I still you know, fight I it too. Surrender. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm 62 next week, you know, well, in 10 days. Right. February uh, 6th. <clears throat> yeah. Mr. Aquarius. 
Yeah. So, but there's still time to go, wow, you know, this is just ridiculous. I should be doing something different. But, but no matter how much I go, I should be doing something different. Yeah. yeah I'm so fascinated by it. I mean, I, I mean, most people, we, I was just talking about this last night. I mean, I guess people going, your life is like so, you're so lucky. Well, you know, I've created conditions within my life to do a certain thing. So I get to go places. I get to hang out with people. They're nice to me. I get to sit around and read all day and talk to people. It's it's because I've been so inspired by it, like on fire about it, that I just kept doing it, and things happen as a result of that energy moving forward. So for people that, <clears throat> as artists or whatever, I'm sorry I'm like this. I've, talked, I've been doing so many readings, I can't talk anymore. Um, for people that are wanting to follow their path, and their path is sort of not the norm, if you really give into it and really believe in it, it the energy kind of creates a path for you. So you got to start the ball rolling, but then it picks up speed and it rolls on its own, and you just roll with it. So that's, you know. So my career, my life is really pretty entertaining, but even with that, there are times I go, wow. <laughs> Yeah. What a strange world I live in. You know, maybe I should do something different. Right. I, ca- I keep going back and thinking that you were a child in the 50s and how, you know, I mean, the remembering past lives in Ohio, right? You were grown up, growing up in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, um, parents weren't understanding that at all. You no, know, I was, uh, I was, a, well, I was a unique child in that I had, as a child, a really high IQ and I was very perceptive and, and I was um, a little blonde, kind of cutie, you know, as a four-year-old. And, and, uh, and so, you know, they were giving all this information about me from, like, the schools. And, you know, you have this child it's really exceptional. Well, they're, you know, they're, you know, from the South. They don't know what's going on. It's not their fault. And so this little strange thing plopped into their lap. And, uh, you know, they did the best they could. But, you know, they all had their own issues. So, um but, I mean, that's also part of that sort of southern thing that I've grown up in. Uh, it influences the ways in which I process things. In some sense, it, it serves as a restriction, but that restriction serves as a motivation to get away from the restriction, right? So you have restrictions, and so the way you deal with them causes you to develop something that you might not have developed had it all been you know, super easy. So right, isn't you know, you your have mom? To look at it from that. Yeah. Well, my well, mom is now in a in a nursing home. Has right. Been for the last few months. Well, I wouldn't right. be in Phoenix, right? Right, right. Because you had your hands full. I know she's you know been failing for a while. But now, um, but where's she originally from? She's like a su- Southern Belle, isn't she? Well, she's originally from Kentucky, and they're the oh, there they're, they're the northern branch because before that they're all in Tennessee, and before that they're all in the Carolinas and Virginia. So they still have this kind of southern thing, right? <laughs> Excuse me. You're so, right. So you were, came, you were, you were, yeah. So even though my family came to the colonies in the in the early 1600s, I look at myself yeah. as a first generation immigrant <laughs> <All right. laughs> because. <laughs> because the culture between where I was in Southern Ohio, right outside of Cincinnati, and them, because they came up after World War II, a lot of them came, migrated to get jobs in the factories, General Motors and different places. You know, that's the reason they ended up in Ohio. You know, I know some people are like, oh, my God, the story's right. on point. Essential fact. And, and so, you know, whenever we would, that connection to that Southern nuclear family, uh, so there was a kind of a disconnect in that, in that universe. But, but the people right. that have that, like the oddballs, like myself and their family tree, we, we sometimes suffer for that a little bit. But ultimately, if you, if you keep rolling with it, I think you do find a kind of a spark of divinity in it, a spark of magic in it. And so there have been times when I've gone, man, this just sucks a lot. But, but I think you, you eventually find a way to frame it. You go, well, this was a gift to me even though it didn't seem like it at the time. And that's also part of, of evolution, I think, is being able to, to see the positives and what might have not been so positive first first glance. You know? Right, right, right. 
I know. Well, I mean, it molds you and programs you, and it's just interesting that you know. I mean, you the the past life lineage. I mean, you're talking about the the destiny of that. You know, here you believe in. Well, I mean, you're experiencing your past lives as a young child because I was too. But I was in California, in Alaska, so it was a little different than yours was. But it's but it's this the interesting. I mean, the South and how how uh, staunch, you know, that their belief system was at that point. And, uh, yeah, you probably were a fanciful child of some, you know. Your mother probably kind of fed it sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, you know, my story is not that unique, but it's sort of, you know, its own interesting kind of, of you know, process. What yeah, interesting. Ultimately, you know, we all have – certain kinds of events, certain kinds of people. I don't think these things are by accident. I, I think you, you agree with me with this. You know, I don't think these things are by accident. We are given, uh, a, we're given a certain kind of spark that we start with. And then we're put in these situations. And these situations sort of tumble dry us or they get us wet or whatever it is that they do. And we have to adapt. But the adaptation is where the evolution is. So if you think about shamans, you know, I came up with this term a long time ago. I know you've heard me say it a thousand times. The shamanic rotor rooter. Well, the shamanic rotor rooter sucks a lot. Okay. So the shamanic rotor rooter is basically like the dark night of the soul. So people have these shamanic rotor rooter where everything just goes to hell. And, and they're like, wow, you know, my life is the shambles. What do I do? Well, you have to put yourself back together. So there's a time when you're sort of humpy dumpy, you know, a bunch of, you know, eggshells, but eventually, and stuff gets into you when you're a humpy dumpy, you know, eggshells that you have to get out later. But eventually you find a way to put the stuff back together and there's a power that you have by reassembling yourself. So when people say, I want to be a shaman, I thought, dude, the last thing, <laughs> the last thing you really want to do to be a shaman because shaman college is not something you send an application for. They come and recruit you at four in the morning. And so you go through these processes. You get ripped up, put back together. But in doing that, you have a vision that you wouldn't have had had you not had a few cracks, you know, along the way. And it's that vision that comes from, from restitching yourself back up. That's where the power is. And if people can understand that and embrace that, I think their life would change like overnight. I really mm -hmm. do think that's true. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Uh, I mean, you know, it, I, why we have to go through these things, I don't know sometimes. You know, I always strive toward normalcy, and I, I find that it, it doesn't really happen for me. But um yeah, it's because of doing all the shamanic work all the time. And it's true. You know, it's not like you're recruit. It's not like you go to school for it. I mean, you're recruited by life and that you um, must be my past lives over and over and over that I signed up to do it. I signed up. Yeah. To do and the it. other thing is either you signed up or you were asked and you want go, okay, sure, whatever. You know, I got nothing else going on that century. I'm, I'm down. You know, so, um, but, you know, like I always say, you know, you could have just told me about it, but I guess not, because telling me about it wouldn't have given me the emotional, um, you know, detonation that went with it. And again, you know, people like, we, again, we talk about, you know, dating or whatever. You might have met someone and maybe you were in a certain kind of a mindset. You had, you know, a pattern is a pattern until it becomes a lesson, right? So you repeat certain types of patterns. Maybe this is in relationships or the ways in which you deal with authority figures or the way in which you deal with your, your health or, you know, your, your, your vision of yourself, your physical image of who you are. All these things you get into what we would consider maladaptive types of, um, of patterns. Excuse me. Right. But, so you, yeah. But, but as you, as you go on, eventually if you start to look at it with a critical eye, you go, oh, I'm, I'm recreating all these situations because of some unresolved thing over here 
and I'm creating these situations to have this experience again. Uh-oh, I shouldn't be doing that. But until you, you see what's behind the scenes, what's the thing that you're recreating and why you're going to keep recreating it. You know, I think that people are addicted to certain kinds of aspects of dysfunctional relationships. They're not really looking for the person. They're creating conditions that will lead to the emotion that comes out of those conditions. Right, so it's the English, reaction of things again. It's the emotional right. reaction at that point. Yeah, no, I agree. Right. Because, yeah, people who really want to be with other people, they actually step in to be a couple. Yeah, I mean, and you don't look for every flaw that someone has. Because everybody's on schoolhouse earth, and you have to, like, go forward and not. Absolutely. Yeah, and everything is going to be flawed. What, you know, job's never going to be perfect. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. But if you change your viewpoint to the perfection, then it all becomes in a, in a better space. It's hard, you know, a lot of people like bully people and, and, um, really, uh, have p- poverty, uh, problems and, uh, health problems, you know, and t- people get real downtrodden. And that's just, you know, c- keeps one if you go diligently forward. And keep going dil- dig- diligently forward is the is really the key. Well, and trusting yourself. Self, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that leads to yes. what I'm going to say. I and mean, trusting yourself, the self-love leads to healthy boundaries. Lots yes. of times we are taught, in this culture especially, that we're not good enough as is. And a lot of our choices are based on trying to get acceptance for somebody else's viewpoint of us. It has really nothing to do with us. Right. Lots of times people want to do things to other people, in essence, to kind of um, point them in a direction that's favorable to them so they won't be negative in how they, quote-unquote, judge them. Mm -hmm. But if you trust yourself, you're going to get what you want because you're going to have the energy that's directed. And at the same time, if you trust yourself, you're going to create healthy boundaries. And, And in doing that, you have a certain level of respect. Lots of times... People who are disrespected have not created those boundaries for themselves. They haven't defined themselves well enough so people sort of see them as punching bags. And um, but, but those things can change, too. There's so many things that people can do, subtle things they can do that will dramatically change their lives. But it, to me, it always comes down to looking at the inception of the pain, the inception of the fracture. Everybody has fractures. So what we want to do is make sure that we kind of help glue those fractures together before they break the vase in half. And those things can be done, you know. I mean, they really can be done. And in doing that, your world's way different. I mean, way different. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's not, you know, like giving of yourself too much. You know, like I I find that there's such a balance of how how do you want to help people and how do you – in not enable people. And again, you know, like Andrew is saying that healthy boundaries is really good because, you know, you have people in the world who just will take everything from you. And, and that could be a spouse to a, to a child, to a drug addict, to a, you know, the, the banks, you know, I mean, you got to be really careful about where you, well, you know, you have to think out your life a little bit for sure. So, um, you know, I, Andrew, I have somebody here who'd like to, um, uh, has a question. So hold on just a second. I'm going to, I'm going to give her my headphones so that she can, she can ask you a question. Oh, cool. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Good. How are you? Very well. Um, got a quick question. I found myself pulled into a lawsuit and it's, you know, it looked like it was going to be an easy no brainer, but they never are. So I'm just wondering if you can see how a lot, how this lawsuit might play out. So, so here's the way that I operate. I look at the emotions, your emotions first. And, and plus, I didn't, I didn't catch your name. My name is Teresa. Teresa. So this is impacting your throat chakra, okay? So this is about basically trying to suppress your voice. So this lawsuit is basically, in my opinion something that's designed to keep you from expressing yourself. To me, that's a complicated situation. So 
so when you look at the energy around it, then we look at the emotion connected to it. So this is almost like a gag ordery kind of energy, right? Right. So what do you want to see happen, like two or three words? And then I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. But just give me like two or three words. I want to get your energy with it. But does it make sense to you what I'm saying about about the restriction in, in expressing yourself? Well, that's certainly my emotion. Certainly my emotion. And what I'd like to see is a, you know, amicable settlement and cooperation with all the parties. So so here's the thing. If it's designed to be a throat chakra kind of issue, what this is designed to do is to really say that on the other side of the coin, my vision of the truth is correct. Your vision of the truth is incorrect. There's an emotional component to this to me. So, <clears throat> so this is about defining <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, but so many readings, oh my God, it's crazy week. It's about defining who's telling the truth, right? I think that you will come to that, but I don't think it's a straight line. And I think the emotions associated with this, Teresa, are about my truth is bigger than your truth. And and it's not so much from a legal standpoint as an interpersonal standpoint. To me, this is a this is a uh, a thing that has a certain amount of emotional history to it. So, so I think you have to stick to your guns with the expectation that your truth is true and will ultimately rule the way in which it comes out. But until then, I think that the dynamics of this, the people involved with this, the emotional bucket that this is dropped into is about trying to suppress your voice. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes, it does. So this is somebody who has an agenda with you, it seems to me. But agenda or no agenda, there is the reality. So even though this is a situation where the person that you're in contention with is trying to distort reality, to me, lots of times it's like, almost like a sociopathic kind of energy in some sense, True. Um, I am the truth, and you're supposed to reflect my truth. Well, you're not reflecting his truth, right? So that's the issue. So ultimately, truth is truth. I think that it comes, circles back around more in your favor. Because I say it, it doesn't make it true. But Tara knows me long enough that I don't lie. I at least believe the madness that comes out of my mouth, right? But but this is a personality agenda. This is somebody that doesn't want their version of truth to be questioned. You can sue me. You're going to do this to me. It's that kind of odd. And um, you just have to you just have to hang tight, keep going. Now, how do you feel about what I just said? Well, it sounds good, and I am the defendant, <clears throat> so I have to stand in my in my truth and what I believe is good and right. And you know, I'm all about doing the right thing. Um, but there's so many now. There's so they're bringing in so many other tendrils to try to attach that have nothing to do with this case. It's just like you see the kind of desperate insidiousness that's taking place and you know i just keep my head down mind my own business nice to everybody and it just is backfiring um well i mean i, I think it's not backfiring as much as it's just a nuisance in the, in the meantime because i think that strategically what you're doing is, is is correct for you and i think ultimately that your vision because you have a strategy to this you have a state of being about this what i'm saying is that to me and I talked to you for five minutes, so I'm an expert. But to me, what's going on is that the energy right now is designed to distort and suppress your voice. And you don't know what you're talking about. That can't be true. Here, here's 42 other people that say something different. Okay. Well, why are they saying something different? Uh, you have to be really confident. And this is designed, and it's, and it's working, it's designed to shake down your confidence. Your confidence is being bombarded. 
because you're being bombarded by messages basically saying what you're saying can't be true. You, you know, I'm the truth. You're not. But, right. but you are the truth. And so as long as you know that, so to kind of put this into English, into the Andy land, in my version of what's going to happen is that you're going to be, for a while longer, for me it's not going to be so much fun for you, in that, again, it's a, it's a continual process towards beating you down. But you're not a woman to be beaten down, so you ultimately will prevail. But I don't think it's going to be a fun trip. Again, that's, that's my opinion. So right. long story, only sort of long. I think you win this case, but at a certain emotional price tag to go through it. Right, I understand. Yeah. Does it feel like uh, a year or six months or two years? Can you get a sense of what the I would, I would be surprised to see it go a significant period of time. Because at some point, to me, the most likely evolution of this case is that they get tired if you don't crack. So right. I think it's designed to crack you, sort of. This is this is a this is a person. This is an agenda. I have an agenda. That, that's the energy with it. Uh, you, you don't agree with me? Well, I'll show you. I'll show you the, the truth. I mean, it's that kind of energy, right? right? So, so this is a domineering thing. And this is this is somebody who refuses to lose because it's not part of his vocabulary to lose. And so, if you are trying to win. Well, that can't be true because I don't lose. It's that kind of whack logic, right? right. So, um, but you're going to win. And if you stand in the gun sights and don't wilt, then it's yours. I don't think it will take a year. It may not even take six months. But for the next short period of time, it's not going to be a good time, I don't think. However, again, just to Tara and I were talking about, you have certain kinds of... Um, events in your life, you have you have things that you go through that at the time seem like they are not such a good good experience, but later they are. Hmm. When you win this case, which is my prediction, we'll find out probably in the summer, towards the end of the summer, around Labor Day, it'd be my guess. If beginning of you know, September, October, if this case is resolved, which I would expect, then you'll be able to see that you've dealt with a lot of your things from being a young girl, especially a young teen girl. You've dealt with a lot of issues by standing up to a dominant, in-your-face, tear-you-down authority figure, male authority figure. So this will transform you. That's my belief. So the experience... Is complicated, it's disruptive, but ultimately you are pulling from your reservoir of strength. You're 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 dipping into the tank. I mean you're you're on you're 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 really digging and pulling out everything you have to, to to withstand the storm. But I think you win. I think it's done within a year, and I think it's a very powerful thing for you, ultimately. In the short term, I think it's complicated. And then I think it's emotionally complicated for you. So not only are you dealing with the madness associated with this and all the surprises, there's a lot of stuff being pulled out of the left field in some field like from Kazakhstan, I mean, way out of left field. But you're adapting to it. Does that make sense, what I'm saying, I hope? Absolutely. I, I have no choice but to adapt, and I'm not one to be taken down easily. So... I, you know, I, I do absolutely resonate with everything you say. I love how you've reframed it. So I can look at this as a positive, you know, especially after it's over and um, go on from there. Because it does, it's affecting my my personal relationships because I just oh, hardly have enough energy for, you know, to give and well, give. Absolutely. There's two things that are going on here. One is you just got to be tired, you know. And secondly, the natural inclination was to be cynical. And I think you have to fight being cynical. And so the, the thing I would like to leave you with is this. Do I know what's going to happen? No. 
Am I 98% accurate? No, there's no 98% accurate. Psychic, that's, that's mythology. It's all psychics. And so I'm going on my way of interpreting my vision of your emotions and what's causing those emotions and what's swirling around you. But my opinion is this, that ultimately you win this case and at the end, you'll be like, I have just been through Mr. Toad's wildest ride with right. fighting toads, okay? But I'm a badass because I survived it. And that's what's going to happen, I think. And I think that when you finally win, and part of that is just to make it stop, right? When they finally have some sort of resolution, and they may not even resolved, it may have a kind of a continual fume of, of you know, goofiness with it. But when it's, from a legal standpoint, is resolved, then you have power you never had in your life. Great. And well, so this I'm... Is creating, this is creating, this is like weight training for you and your emotions. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. I'm going to hand you back to Tara. And um, God bless. Well, thank thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, Andrew. Thank you for that. Does that yeah. make sense? What I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. It was wonderful. Yes. She's just thankful. Awesome. I mean, I think the important thing with this, and I just say this to you, is that sometimes people get into situations where other people try to control them, and that that interpersonal dynamic, because to me this is an interpersonal, this is a, you know, this is a personality crisis worked out through the courts, kind of. And so you have these situations that is now, in one sense, causing a problem. But the way in which, again, going to shaman college kind of way to analyze this, the way in which she is dealing with this, she's getting ripped up. But the way that she's dealing with this she's also stitching herself back together. So not only has she gone through, once it's all said and done, uh, an experience that has transformed her, she has the kind of the luxury of winning. At the same time, she has the added bonus of having developed in a very uh, kind of unusual way. And so she's put herself in these situations, if you want to get all cosmic She's put herself in a situation in order to help her reflect and understand, really, her childhood. So um, that may seem like an odd way to describe it, but I think that's true. So when she comes out the other side of this, then she has not only stopped this, she's also released a lot of things from being a young girl. She no longer needs these experiences. And, and so her life will be way different. She will be all sunny and glowy this time next year. That's my prediction. Yay. Yay. In a way different way than she is right now. So she's probably some kind of somber, kind of beaten down energy to her a little bit, you know, relatively speaking. I think she'll be all perky and smiley this time next year. Good. Well, you know, because it, it isn't a very unnecessary thing. You, you see these things and go, well, why? <laughs> It's this one is issue. certainly, it's a personality issue, and it certainly is why. Yeah, it's like you, do, you oh, don't yeah, get it at all. Yeah, not My at all. truth is the truth, whether it's true or not. This right. is the theme of this case. Yeah, and it's a, yeah, it's a real odd, it is a real odd thing. But, you know, I mean, there's a lot of odd things in the world, you know, that we have to deal with that are, you know, ridiculous at the moment, and you wonder why they even get listened to. I mean, that's just like wacky. That one's a wacky one for sure. Yeah. So I'm glad. Thank you for, for helping her on that. Oh, yeah, of so, course. Yeah. So um, now, all right, I want everybody to be able to find you. So are you at so Andrew my website, yeah. Andrew-Brewer.com. That's me. And, A-N-D-R-E-W. Brewer, B R E W E R. But it's Andrew yeah. with a dash brewer dot com. Yeah. And do you have a phone number or an email or just Andrew dash brewer is usually That's the best system. way to do it is just right. to go to there and then there are links from there. I don't really use the phone. 
mm-hmm. too much. I kind of I, I prefer people to write me. So yeah, it's a that's a funny thing. I know that I'm on the phone a lot too, and people will say the same thing. You know, why don't you would just want to talk to me? Well, yeah, but it's an appointment. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, you so, be, so yeah, for me, it's yeah. sort of a um, yeah. You know, I think it's just easier for me to keep track of. So right? yeah, and that too, absolutely that for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Well, I'm sorry I missed you again. I will eventually cross paths. How how many years have we been trying to do this? Yeah. So, uh, but um, so did you have fun in Indiana? I'm, well, what do you think? Because you're, <laughs> I don't know. I think you may not have been the most fun you ever had. But no, yeah, no, I, it's okay there. Uh, but. Yeah. Um, that's all right. I'm having fun in Phoenix, so so that's good. Awesome. So you're happy for me. Awesome. I um, am. I'm very happy for you. Very happy. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about in the next four minutes? Anything? Mm, gosh. Well, no, we're going to wrap it up, I believe. You know, we're, we, we start early now, so we wrap early. Oh, good. So, yeah, to get on our minutes and our, our different, um, commercials and stuff. But thank you, Andrew, for being on the show. And, and it's a new moon on Sunday. It's eight degrees, Aquarius. And I'm going uh, to a new moon festival, a Chinese, I'm going to a Chinese New Year festival tomorrow. So that'll be fun. Nice. That's so beautiful. Well, the new moon, everybody, is darkness. It's the time of dreaming, the lightest time on the planet as far as the gravity. So everybody enjoy and blessings, Andrew. Lots of love. Lots of love, everyone. We'll see you later. Bye. Thank you for sharing your time with Tara Sutphin. Find out more about Tara's work, upcoming seminars, and meditations to help you fulfill your dreams by visiting her website at tarasutphin.com.